how do I shoot notes in crescendo? In the game crescendo, there are a few different places around the field in which you can score the note. You can score it in the speaker, you can score it in the amp, you can score it in the trap. All three locations on the field are different. They may require different tuning or changes to accomplish the task. One thing to consider when scoring in the speaker is how you're going to line up and ensure that you're shooting in the correct direction. You may want to use some of the protected zones or field elements to help align your shot. This game challenge is different from previous years as the face of the goal is angled towards the floor. In previous games, goals have been either parallel with or perpendicular to the floor. Teams that are closer to the speaker will have a wider range in which they can shoot and score due to the angle at which the goal is placed. Teams that are further away will have a more narrow window in which they'll have to control their shot. When designing your shooter for the speaker, you may find that you're able to use the same mechanism for both the amp and the trap by just varying the speed, angle, or some small variable in your design. You may also decide that you have a completely different mechanism for all those different tasks. Whatever you choose, it's up to you, and I'm sure there'll be robots at the competition that do all of these different things. In the 2013 FRC game, teams needed to shoot discs into a goal above the driver's station. There may be some similar aspects of robots that teams may want to consider that will help their robot designs this year. And teams incorporated a lot of different strategies while trying to shoot the discs that teams may want to use when looking at manipulating the note and putting them in the goals. Every shooter mechanism has a few basic elements. You'll need to figure out a way to get the game piece into the shooter. You'll have to figure out how to hold it securely while you drive across the field. And you'll have to figure out how to angle it and get it in the right place so that when you release the shot, it ends up in the goal. One thing to consider when you're aiming is how you're going to ensure that your shooter is always propelling towards the speaker. Some teams may choose to have a variable angle on their shooter in which they have a mechanism that allows their shooter to change angle in order to aim in the right direction. This will allow your team to shoot from more locations on the field, but will require extra tuning in order to ensure that angle is correct. Teams may want to add extra vision or sensors in order to ensure that their shooter is set at the correct angle. Another way that you may be able to vary where your shot ends up after you shoot it is the speed at which you're shooting. Play around with the speed of the motors that you're using and see how far or how close you can get your shots to land. This may provide an area in which you can shoot from a wide range. Consistency is going to be very important in this game especially during the amplification period. Teams will need to ensure that their shooter is very consistent and always shooting at the same speed. One way that teams are able to accomplish this is by ensuring that the game piece doesn't touch the final propelling roller or wheel until it is spun up and fully up to speed. A series of wheels or something to hold the game piece back may be useful in ensuring that your shots are very consistent. Some things to consider when you're shooting into the speaker are how you're going to hold the note game piece in your robot. This year, this game piece is made out of foam, so it may be able to be compressed in many different directions. When you're shooting your game piece, you may want to consider whether you're shooting it on either side and compressing it on the side, or whether you're shooting it at the top and bottom. Both of these choices may work for you. We just have to try it out and see what will work best. Andy Mark has many different types of wheels that may work on this game piece. In the kit of parts, we supplied orange stealth wheels, and those may be used to make a shooter. These wheels are rigid and made of plastic and don't compress much. This year, you may be able to use a wheel that's rigid because the game piece compresses so much on the sides. You may also want to use compliant wheels, but the compliant wheel ends up squishing. You may not want to have compliance in both the wheel that's shooting and the game piece itself. Additionally, consistency is important. So uh, when using the stealth wheel, you have the option of adding a flywheel weight to it. This will add some extra weight to your wheel that will allow it to maintain its speed in which it's rotating for longer. So when a game piece touches the wheel, it maintains its speed all throughout the whole shot. This flywheel fits directly inside of a stealth wheel and adds a little bit of extra weight while not adding any width to your mechanism. There are many different ways that you can get a working shooter for this game. You'll need to test it out and figure out which method works best for you and your robot and all the things you want to do in this game. And that is how you shoot a game piece in Crescendo. <laughs>